Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're taking a look today at a fancy two-in-one from HP. This is their Spectre X360-16, and this is something that can turn into a tablet, but also, of course, work like a normal laptop. And this one's got a really nice 4K OLED display. And we're going to take a closer look at what this laptop is all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from HP. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Spectre 16 is all about. Now the price point on this will vary based on configuration. It starts at around $1,500, but to get up to what we've got here, you're looking at around $2,000 at the time I'm recording this video. Uh, this one has an Intel processor inside and an i7-11390H. This one also has an NVIDIA GPU, an RTX 3050. The base model just has Intel graphics, but the Intel graphics have been getting really good lately. And while the GPU does give you a boost in graphical performance, it's not as big of a gap as it used to be. Uh, but if you want the highest performance, definitely go for the one with the discrete GPU. At the time I'm recording this video, I think the 3050 is the top GPU available for this unit. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM on board. The RAM is not upgradable, so you'll need to choose your RAM selection and stick with it for the life of ownership here. It does, though, have a replaceable NVMe SSD. This one came with a one terabyte SSD, and they also have a replaceable Wi-Fi card on board, too, if you wanted to update that down the road, but the RAM is not upgradable. Now, this is a rather large device because it does have a 16-inch display on board, and again, this one has the OLED display, which looks beautiful. Uh, one of the benefits of OLED is that it has an excellent contrast ratio. So the black levels are very, very black on these displays, and it really stands out versus LED lit displays. Now, the OLED is an option, uh, so the lower cost units have a regular LED display. But if you want the best looking thing here, I think the OLED is the way to go. Unfortunately, it does not appear that it has any HDR support for media playback. I was poking around in Disney Plus and Netflix and did not see that option. So there's no HDR or Dolby Vision here, uh, but this does support 100% of the DCI-P3 standard. This one is 4K. It's running at 3840 by 2400, and it has a brightness level of 400 nits, which is very bright, very crisp, great color, uh, and all in a really good display for media creation and also just entertainment. Now this is not a high frame rate display though, so it'll max out at 60 hertz, but it is a 16 by 10 display, so you do have a little more height on this one versus some of the 16 by 9 displays that prior generation laptops had. Now the weight on this comes in at four pounds, six ounces. That is just shy of two kilograms, 1.98 to be exact, but it's made completely out of metal. It's got a very nice high quality feel to it and some really nice design elements that you'll see when we look at some of the ports on this as well. And it is of course a two in one. The hinge feels pretty good on this. It will keep the display where you leave it, um, but it does tend to bounce around a lot, especially if you are uh, using the touch screen. As you can see here, it does shake a bit. And this desk that I'm on is also a little wobbly, so I was noticing that uh, when I was testing out the webcam earlier, and we'll check out that webcam in a few minutes. The keyboard is very nice as well. It's your standard HP keyboard. The keys are well-spaced and decently sized. It is backlit. It's a white backlight on there. You've got some really nice speakers on this. It's got four speakers, and it just kind of emits sound out of the entire base here. It sounds good. The base levels are okay. It's actually a pretty good sounding laptop for media playback. And then of course you can attach headphones either over Bluetooth or through its headphone jack. Decent trackpad here, nice and large, tracks pretty well. And some models will come with a pen in the box like our review loaner did here. And this pen, which we'll test a little bit later in the review, uh, can dock itself to the side of the display here magnetically. So there's a place to put it when it's not in use. Now, most of the laptops we review have ports on the sides and some have them on the back. This one has ports on its corners. Let me show you what I mean by that. So we'll take the laptop here and put it up on its side. And you'll notice on the back corner here is a headphone jack. So it's got kind of a little port carved out there on that edge. 
And then on the side, where you typically find ports, we have an HDMI port along with a full-size USB 3 port. And like some other thin HP laptops we've looked at, this has a little door so that the laptop can be thin yet still have one of those full-size ports. On the other side, we have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, but you might only see one looking at it here. That's because they put the second port on the corner. Now these are full service ports, so these will do video output. They will also do power in along with data devices, both USB-C and Thunderbolt. Uh, but for the best performance, you're going to want to use the power supply that comes with the laptop. This is a 135 watt power supply that plugs into the barrel connector here. And this will give the GPU and CPU the power it needs to operate at full performance. Uh, Thunderbolt, I believe at the moment, kind of tops out at 100 watts, at least most of the uh, third-party chargers you'll find out there do. So you will want to keep that barrel connector with you when you're traveling. In addition to the power port and the Thunderbolt ports, we also have a micro SD card reader here on the side. Now, battery life on this is going to vary based on your configuration. If you go with this one that's got the GPU and the fancy bright OLED display, you're looking at probably around six to eight hours depending on what you're doing. And you're gonna to wanna to keep the display brightness down. If you are doing video editing or any kind of multimedia work and you're running that GPU, your battery life is going to be much less. The units with the lower resolution LED displays will probably do a little better on battery life and might get you through a workday. But the OLED here at this resolution will consume more battery power just by the nature of its display. Uh, but it does seem to charge up pretty quickly when you have it connected to power. Now it's got a pretty nice webcam on board. It will shoot video at 1080p at 30 frames per second and will do still photos at five megapixels. So a nice bump in resolution versus some other laptops we've looked at uh, over the last year or so. It also has a privacy shutter that you can activate by hitting a key on the keyboard here. That will actually put a physical shutter over the camera and deactivate it as you can see here. So you do have some flexibility on that. Now HP has a couple of extra software features for the webcam that you might find of interest here. Uh, one is called beauty mode and this will smooth out your skin, uh, make you look a little nicer perhaps without having to put on makeup. Uh, they also have an auto frame feature and what this will do is will uh, kind of move the camera image around here to track your face. Uh, what it does do though in the course of that is lower the resolution because it's cropping and zooming based on that 1080p image. So the quality of your webcam will degrade a bit, but you can move around and have the camera keep you in frame. It is a bit of an uh, abrupt kind of camera movement that it will do, as you can see, um, but it does seem to actually work pretty well. And I was able to get this to work with Zoom and Google Meet and a few of the other webcam applications I tested with it. They also have some security features here. So if you walk away, uh, the unit can detect that and lock the computer up automatically. It can also wake itself up when you approach it uh, with uh, facial recognition. And then they have another cool feature here called shoulder surfing. And what this will do is blur your screen if it finds somebody sneaking up behind you looking over your shoulder. So it's got some neat little features here that are software based that enhance the webcam a bit. All right, let's take a look now and see how it performs. We'll start off with some basics here, some web browsing. We're on my Wi-Fi 6 network here, and as expected, everything performs very, very quickly. A little bit earlier, we also looked at YouTube running a 4K 60 frames per second video. We had a couple of drop frames when it first started. That's kind of normal and par for the course, but after that, everything ran smoothly as we played out the full video, so I think uh, doing Netflix and Disney Plus and other services will run just fine on here, just without the HDR. And just remember that most content is shot in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so you will see some letterboxing on this 16 by 10 display. On the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 174, and that puts this machine very close to other i7 based laptops for doing web browsing and all the different things that you might run on a web browser. And I also found it to be a decent video editing device. Producer Jake shot some 4K video of his cat the other day and loaded it into this project. So we've got a little real time effect going on there. I can maybe change it to a uh, cross dissolve and we'll see how that uh, takes effect here. Not seeing any real slowdown here when I'm switching transitions and whatnot. So it's able to keep up with the real time effects even at 4K. 
and that's thanks to the GPU that is baked into this machine. So I think for mid-level video editing, it should perform quite well on the road. And the pen worked pretty nicely on here as well. It's a little slippery on the screen, but it tracks well. Uh, very low latency, as you can see, and it is really nice to draw on an OLED display like this. So I think if you are looking to do some artwork, uh, this definitely might be something to consider. Uh, the pen charges over USB Type-C. They give you a little cable here in the box. And again, you can uh, dock it here to the side of the laptop, and it will stay put even when you shut the lid. So let's take a look at some games running on the laptop now. This is Red Dead Redemption 2. We were running it at 1920 by 1200 at lowest settings, and we were getting about 45 frames per second, give or take, out of that 3050 GPU. You're definitely not going to get a playable frame rate at 4K here, but 1920 by 1200 appeared to be the sweet spot for everything that we tried out. Next up here is Doom Eternal. Again, 1920 by 1200, but this time we set the settings to high and we were getting anywhere from 45 to 65 frames per second, sometimes a little bit more than that, so a very playable experience. And of course, you could tweak things to get it to 60, and it all looked great on that OLED display. And last up here is Fortnite. We ran this one at 1920 by 1200 at high settings, and we were getting between 40 and 60 frames per second out of the 3050 GPU here. So this is you know, gonna play games pretty well, but it won't rival a gaming laptop uh, which will have a more powerful GPU. We did try running Fortnite here at 4K, but it was very choppy like the other games were as well. So I think this 1920 by 1200 will fill that 16 by 10 display and give you the best performance with this 3050 GPU. And on the 3 d Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 3,510. You'll note that the GPU performance here is not as good as a Legion 5i Pro laptop running with the same GPU. And the reason is, is that the GPU on this one is limited to 40 watts for its maximum power draw. And that gaming laptop can run that GPU at a higher power level. And I think that's impacting the performance. I also noticed that the CPU performance was not where I expected it either. You can see we got about 12 frames per second on the CPU portion of that test. And even an i5 chip in the HP NV14 we looked at a little while ago did a little bit better there. So I think this one is a little limited in its power consumption, primarily to keep the cooling level at a point where it doesn't lose performance, but that will impact gaming quite a bit. And that's why I would recommend this one mostly for creative pursuits versus game playing. And I'll note we had the laptop running in its performance mode for all of these tests and games you just saw. Uh, they do have a default mode called Smart Sense that tries to manage the temperature of the unit along with performance and fan noise. But we always like to make sure we get the most out of these things, so we put performance mode on. We also ran the 3D Mark stress test under its performance mode to see how well it performs under load for an extended period of time. And there we got a passing grade of 97.9% that indicates this will not give you much thermal throttling even when it's running at full blast for a while. So while the performance won't rival a gaming laptop, it'll be consistent performance and that might be good for doing some of that creative work. Now it does have a pretty noisy fan when it's running in its performance mode and that fan will kick on when you run things like DaVinci Resolve and other applications that really work the GPU. You can balance out the fan noise a little bit with that smart sense mode, but that might impact performance. So just be prepared for uh, some audible fan noise on this one, especially when you are pushing that GPU. All right, one last thing to take a look at now, and that is Ubuntu and Linux performance on this device. Everything got picked up and detected automatically here without issue. That includes the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, and the audio. The GPU was detected, and as you can see, the touch panel was working as well and altogether a really nice Ubuntu experience on this, and I would imagine other Linux distributions should work fine too if you want to run something other than Windows. So overall, I found this to be a very elegant laptop for doing creative work. It's not something I'm going to recommend to gamers given some of the performance limitations here, but for video editing and photo editing and that sort of thing, I think the uh, OLED display here combined with the overall fit and finish make it a decent portable creative workstation. And that is going to do it for this look at the HP Spectre X360-16. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht. 
Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel. Brian Parker and Frank Goldman. Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya. And Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.